the members of a cheetah litter, two brothers and a sister, are scouting the surrounding dunes. At close to 20 months of age, they have separated from their mother and momentarily live together as a sibling coalition. They are slowly moving west towards the nearby river valley in search of prey. It is late autumn and it is springbok's rutting season. For a few weeks, territorial bulls will be asserting their dominance by posturing, bellowing, and chasing other males. By 10 a.m., the three cheetahs have reached the bottom of the valley and intensely observe the distracted springboks looking for fawns. When hunting fawns, cheetahs start their chase as far away as 500 meters. The average speed during a chase is 64 kilometers per hour, even though they can accelerate up to 112 kilometers per hour. Cheetahs, like all cats, kill their prey with a strangulation bite. After carrying their prey to a shady place, the three siblings devour it in less than one hour. After they leave, the omnipresent jackals fight over the carcass. Until a late arriving lion takes over the last scraps of meat. Lions dispossess smaller carnivores of their prey any time they can. When cheetahs hunt in the river valleys, springbucks are by far their most sought after source of food. Springbucks are also the most frequent prey when these speedy cats hunt in depressions called pans. Here, water collects briefly during the rainy season. However, pans are far more important to the local fauna for the salt licks that attract herbivores all year round. Cheetahs hunt frequently in the dunes. Springboks are seldom found in this environment because of the scarcity of their preferred types of food. In the dunes, the graceful steenbok is the cheetah's most sought after prey. They most commonly live as solitary animals, but may occasionally be spotted in pairs. The success rate of two or more cheetahs hunting a steenbok is high despite the speed and agility of these small antelope. Single cheetahs are much less successful. With the onset of her first estrus, the female cheetah separates from her brothers and establishes her own territory within the maternal home range. As it is winter, early mornings are frigid and frost covers the grassland. Our young lady climbs a tree to scan the surrounding area, looking for prey. As the sun rises, a pride of lions is drinking at a nearby waterhole. Their presence prevents the cheetah from hunting as she would soon be dispossessed of her carcass. Cheetahs, like all other cats, have excellent vision. After climbing down from the tree, young lady nervously approaches the same water hole. The lions have permeated the area with their scent and she is very edgy. Lions kill cheetahs whenever they can catch them. While scanning the surroundings, she spots, in the distance, an approaching male lion. Having quenched her thirst, she decides it is time to leave while the lion is still far away. Further south, her brothers are scanning the horizon from the dunes overlooking the valley floor. After some time, 
having detected nothing of interest, they lazily come down from their perch to the bottom of the valley and towards a thicket of camel thorn trees. They have migrated about a hundred kilometers from their mother's range and are working hard to establish their new territory. A team of the Kalahari Cheetah's study has put a radio collar on one of the two brothers. At the thicket, they mark their territory by repeatedly spraying the tree trunks with urine. Members of male cheetah coalitions are less affectionate towards each other than a member of a lion coalition would be. They limit body contact to cheek rubbing and face licking. The two brothers occasionally will spend a short period of time apart. While searching for one another, they patrol their territory and leave olfactory markings by defecating or spraying urine on the most frequently visited landmarks. They also repeatedly call one another. afternoon the brothers are back together and they walk away from the more dangerous river valley to spend their night in the safer dunes. A year has gone by and young lady has two male cubs and a radio collar. In late winter she and her cubs are walking down toward the river valley, looking for a comfortable spot in the shade. Suddenly, the cubs take off and disappear. After some time, young lady becomes anxious and starts to call them while moving towards a nearby water hole for a drink. Totally oblivious to their mother, the two bandits have reached the road where playtime is on. For cats, playtime is an important component of their learning process towards becoming skillful hunters. For cheetahs, the emphasis is on chasing, swatting, stalking, and pouncing. A little fight practice is added to the mix. Meanwhile, their mother continues to search until finally she spots them and rushes to reunite with the two rascals. Cubs' mortality rate is very high. It is likely that 50% of cheetah cubs will not reach adulthood. A nearby mother has lost two of her three cubs. The surviving one has only her mother to play with. Lion cubs spend a lot of time playing, but the skills they learn during playtime are different. Stalking and pouncing become prominent as well as fighting. For the big social cats, fighting skills are indispensable for reproduction and survival. Living in prides, lion cubs have to survive the rather tough play of older and bigger cousins. Lion cubs and their mothers also climb trees but not for any practical purpose, except enjoyment. Adult males are too heavy for such acrobatic antics. After a long, cold winter, springtime finally settles in and the desert blooms. 
springboks are in calving season at this time of year and this continues all the way through autumn. Newborn fawns are able to stand within an hour of their birth and it takes them only a few hours to be able to walk steadily and to run, a necessary adaptation in order to survive predation. As soon as they are able to stand, newborn fawns attempt to feed, not quite sure where the mother's nipples are located. The attempt is made harder by wobbly legs. Springboks breed synchronously and big nursery herds are formed for several weeks. Nursery herds ensure a greater protection of the newborn fawns and keep themselves separated from harem and bachelor herds. Toward the end of spring, dark clouds cover the sky. Violent but short-lived thunderstorms lash the bushveld, and after a few days, green grass grows where the rain did fall. By now, the fawns are able to run at great speed while dodging, the best strategy to frustrate predating cheetahs and carcals. When excited, they love pronking, a vertical jump characteristic of springboks. Young ladies' brothers have separated, but they still share the same territory. One of them visits his preferred waterhole in late summer. The next day, his brother is scanning the horizon from the ridge overlooking the same waterhole. In the distance, two springbok are fighting. Lone antelope and small distracted groups distanced from their herd are more likely to be targeted. To get sufficiently close to attempt a chase, less than 50 meters, cheetahs use different techniques depending on the terrain. In this case, as vegetation cover is available for the speedy hunter, he stalks his quarry as close as possible before sprinting for the kill. During the chase, the cheetah's breath rate goes up to 150 beats per minute and its temperature soars. After the kill, Cheetahs need some resting time before they begin eating. After recuperating his breath, the cheetah drags the dead springbok towards a shady place. Then, he opens the carcass from the rear. Shearing the skin with his molar teeth, he begins eating the hind limbs. A cheetah can eat as much as 14 kilograms per sitting and not hunt again for three to five days, but he must take some time to rest. Before he begins eating, the cheetah drags the carcass under a tree to be less visible to larger predators passing by. Not surprisingly, a jackal shows up, attracted by the delicious smell of blood and fresh meat. Being alone, he circles at a safe distance. Suddenly, both animals detect the smell of an approaching spotted hyena. And, reluctantly, the cheetah abandons his carcass. The jackal has free access to the succulent carcass and does not waste time. Little jackal is the most successful scavenger of the Kalahari. A great nose, Perseverance, prudence, and quickness are the keys to its success. Cheetahs are the livest of the big carnivores and do not defend their kills. Their strategy is to gorge as quickly as possible and linger with the carcass only if none of the big bruisers show up. The hyenas, in this case, can take over the carcass. 
Hours later, a bunch of hungry jackals join the action. This remaining hyena faces the harassment of the little pest. Two other cats are successful hunters of springboks. Both are prevalently nocturnal, solitary, and territorial. The leopard is a quintessential ambush and stalking predator. It pounces on the quarries before being t detected. The carcal is extremely fast over short distances and a great jumper. It is a formidable predator for its size because of its speed, strength, and agility. Jackals are major predators of young fawns. Mothers can effectively defend their offspring from one jackal, but not from two or more. In autumn, five male springbok are walking past a gray camel thorn tree where young lady is lying in ambush. Suddenly, she sprints from cover and expertly dispatches her prey. After recuperating her breath, she pulls the carcass into the shade, where she is rejoined by her cubs for the feast. Having satisfied their hunger, the cub's attention is captured by an approaching jackal. After intimidating the intruder and chasing him away, they take off, abandoning the carcass. Cheetah's hunting success rate is very high, over 40%. Therefore, they are far less anxious about retaining possession of a carcass than lions or leopards whose hunting success rate is much lower. The jackal's patience is rewarded with an abundant meal. Meanwhile, the two cubs rejoin their mother for a quick greeting. Then it is playtime. After a good meal, they have plenty of calories to burn. This time, the play session centers on a mock fight. Cheetahs do not live in prides like lions. Therefore, they fight very rarely. Males fight when they compete for females in estrus, or when they catch one or more other males trespassing on their territory. Early in the morning of the next day, the two rascals are after an African wild cat who seeks safety up on a gray camel thorn tree. After some time, they rejoin their patient mother for another hunt. With two sub-adult cubs, young lady has to hunt almost every day to provide sufficient food for her family. Moreover, the two cubs are still in training. Soon, they will be sufficiently old to separate from their mother and will have to provide for themselves. After walking along the ridge overlooking the river valley for almost an hour, they spot in the distance a possible prey. A small herd of heart beasts is frolicking in the bottom of the valley. Most importantly, for our trio, the herd includes a few calves. Male coalitions, or mothers with sub-adult cubs, can bring down adult antelopes as big as wildebeests, but calves are a far safer prey. Stalking starts with the cubs in the lead. 
when sprinting for the kill, they start way too early, and the heart beasts, the fastest antelopes of the Kalahari, have no difficulty escaping. Not overly disappointed, after all, the chase was a lot of fun, the cubs rejoin their mother in the shade. Being mostly diurnal hunters, they will give it another try, but they will change their strategy. They will wait in ambush for Springbok to pass close by. In the afternoon, a herd of Springbok approaches. When close to the cheetah's hiding place, the Springboks detect possible danger and emit alarm calls at short intervals. Some excited fawns start pronking and trigger the attack of the impatient cubs. At the beginning, the cheetahs gallop toward the herd at a moderate speed. Then, having selected a victim, they accelerate at full speed. They momentarily down a springbok fawn, but fail to kill it, and the chase restarts. Finally, after a burst of speed, they bring down their prey. This was an inept hunt. The fawn forgot to dodge, and the cubs extended the hunt to the very limit of their endurance, 300 meters. Now they proudly carry the prey to their mother, waiting in the shadow, bickering on who has the honor to bring the supper to their mom. After a long day and a considerable use of energy, they eagerly start feeding. Not surprisingly, the racket of the prolonged chase has alerted a few jackals desperate to join, one way or the other, to the family dinner. The jackal's insistence gets on the cub's nerves and they are chased away. Halfway toward devouring carcass, the mother cheetah detects a possible danger. A male leopard is approaching the nearest water hole for a drink. It is rather far away and young lady is undecided on what to do. After a while, she decides to be prudent. She abandons the carcass and walks away with her cubs. Oblivious to the situation, the leopard, after drinking his fill, takes off in the same direction he came from. And the three cheetahs walk back to their unfinished meal. They will enjoy this carcass for a while longer. Months later, the cheetahs have separated. Young lady is in estrus again and frequently leaves olfactory messages to advertise her readiness to mate. The two young brothers are now independent. Lacking experience, they soon run into trouble. Evolutionarily, cheetahs have sacrificed strength and toughness for speed. Therefore, they are prone to injuries that can be catastrophic. A wounded cheetah cannot hunt and may starve to death. In this case, the wounded brother's leg is heavily bruised, but not broken. And he survives with the help of his brother, who waits for him and hunts for both. Two weeks later, the leg has mended, and the brothers, having learned an important lesson, take advantage of the ongoing calving season to improve their hunting skills.